clarification from the voters on that um, at the uh, uh, next opportunity, which would be at the 2020 election. So without getting clarity and without putting it back out to the people, because there's not clarity, if we went to a four plus at large, without that clarity, the at large mayor position could usurp the most recently passed term limits yeah. measure. I'm not sure I heard all of that question, but why don't you restate it and let me try it. <laughs> right. <clears throat> without clarity, without changing the law, the law being the term limits, <clears throat> then, and if we went with a at-large mayor in four districts, without the change in that law and without that clarification, then the mayor would not be held to any term limits. Would it be fair to say? No, no. I would say what's fair to say is this. Um, that uh, that I have researched this issue, and what I found was that there's no statute that answers the question um, that we're talking about right now of whether the um, term limits that passed would apply to an elected mayor since you didn't have an elected mayor when that term limits measure was passed. So there's no statute on it. Um, we look for cases. There's no case law on it either. So that's why there's the lack of clarity because we don't have, sometimes you're going to find in the law that sometimes there's an answer and sometimes there's not. And here's a situation where the, the, there is no definite answer. So that's why I have said that my recommendation would be that if you do go with an elected mayor, that you would want to get clarification with respect to the term limits question. And you could do that by presenting uh, a measure to the voters, just as was done in, in 2018. Uh, one of the uh, term limit measures was one that was presented by the council. You could do that, or the public could, uh, you know, uh, uh, on their own, um, or in combination, as happened in 2018, where you have one from the council and one from the public. Um, but I do think that that issue would need to be clarified if you're going to go with an elected mayor. Okay, that's all I got. Any other questions? Any other questions to any staff members uh, for Mr. Clifford or anything of that nature now? Okay, so before we start our deliberation, let me ask once again what we're tasked with tonight. What is our, our, our preference if we could get uh, some movement on this particular issue? One of them, I would think, is whether or not we want to, uh, the five districts that go to four districts and a mayor, and the next tax I think that we want to perhaps talk about is the amount of people in each district. So, Mr. Clifford, is there anything else that you can think of that would be helpful for us to, to talk about tonight? Um, I have something to volunteer on that. Um, as is indicated in the agenda report on big page three, um, under the second full paragraph, uh, it's indicated that the city council may wish to initially consider a discussion on whether the city council is in favor of an elected mayor or a mayor selected by the city council. Um, uh, that this will assist in making the decision on the number of districts. Um, so the, the reason um, uh, in support of that, the rationale being that once you make your decision as to whether or not you're going to have favor an elected mayor or not, that kind of drives the question of how many districts you're going to have because if you are favoring an elected mayor, then your choices on districts would be that you could have four, six, or eight. And if you are, are, your discussion leads you to not an elected mayor, then your alternatives are five, seven, and nine. Okay, so the suggested action, we have three suggested action here. Would you recommend that we deal with all three of them individually, or would you recommend that we, we vote, we, we, put, we combine all of them into to one? Well, the, the first suggested action is to receive public comment regarding the composition of the city council, voting districts, and the criteria to establish the boundaries of the uh, city's voting districts, so you've received the public comment. Um, the second item is the uh, adoption of a resolution with those revisions that you um, de determined to be appropriate um, uh, to and adopting the line drawing criteria for the establishment of city council district boundaries and the desired number of districts. And I should mention that if you look at big page seven, um, 
under Section 4, um, and I think it's worthwhile that I read this to the public for those who may not have this uh, uh, resolution in front of them. Section 4 of the proposed resolution uh, reads this way. It says that the number of city council districts for mapping, for map drawing shall be, and then choose one or more of the following, and then there's six choices. Choice one is five with the mayor selected annually by the city council. Choice two, seven with the mayor selected annually by the city council. Choice three, nine with the mayor selected annually by the city council. Choice four is four, and when I say four, four districts, with the mayor elected at large by the voters. Five is six with the mayor elected at large by the voters, or uh, six, eight with the mayor elected at large by the voters. Um, if you look at the agenda report with respect to what other cities in the county have done, um, that's on back on big page three. Um, the city of Moore Park, for example, reviewed maps that were uh, comprised of um, uh, four districts with an elected mayor, and also maps with five districts and a mayor selected by the council. That was what Moore Park did. Ojai reviewed maps comprised of four districts with an elected mayor, and um, that's what the council approved. Uh, Oxnard reviewed maps comprised of four, six, and eight districts, all with an elected mayor. Simi Valley reviewed maps comprised of four districts and six districts with an elected mayor, and maps with five and seven districts with the mayor selected by the council. And then finally, the city of Ventura reviewed maps comprised of seven districts with a mayor selected by the council. And in the last paragraph on big page three, it's point, we point out, it's pointed out in the agenda report that in the districting process that none of the cities changed their method of selection of mayor. So if they had a mayor that was elected previously, they remained with that. And then Ventura, for example, had their mayor appointed annually and they stuck with theirs. So they stayed with their same system for selection. I mean, it doesn't mean that obviously you need to do that. It's just I'm giving you this information as to what the other cities did um, uh, in, in terms of the analysis. So to, to go back to the choices that are in the, re, in the resolution about which you're going to do, you could select one of these and that the maps would be prepared accordingly, or you could select more than one and then see what the maps would look like with those additional choices, such as what some of the other cities in the county did. All right, so we've heard, uh, uh, Mr. Perrick, is there any questions uh, now, Mr. Perrick? Or of staff? Okay. Okay, so with that, we will op we'll open up to uh, the council deliberation. Can I just kick point. this off once yes, with one Raven. suggestion? Going to big page seven, section four, I have heard nobody talk about options number two, seven, uh, council members and or nine nine or, or uh, option three nine council members I haven't heard anybody talk about option five six council members or eight eight uh, or uh, option six eight council members so if the council doesn't object why don't we just get those off the table and then talk about the other two that are left, number one and number four, number one being five council members with the mayor selected annually by the city council, and number four, four council members with the mayor elected at large by the voters. What is the feeling of the council members on that? I see people shaking their heads, so let's go over that again. We will discuss, be discussing option number one, and option number four during our deliberations. All right, so with that, um, we can start our discussion. Would anybody like to start off uh, with the discussion? Okay. Uh, Susan. Susan, okay. Ms. Santangelo. Thank you. Um, this is really, really important issue um, to me, and I know um, 
based on um, the interactions I've had with our community over the last three or four weeks. Um, and I want everybody to know that I take it really, really seriously. Um, and this has been causing me a lot of angst um, because I'm hearing a lot of different things from a lot of different people. And um, I'm, I just want everybody to know how, how much I'm trying to get this right. Um, not for me, for our community. Um, I, I also want to acknowledge um, some of the disappointment or dissatisfaction with the last public hearing. Um, and, you know, we're doing this for the first time too. Um, and I think that um, there was an appearance that we had made a decision, um, but we did not vote. Um, and one of the things that um, sometimes I think the public forgets is that the first time that we're able as a group to discuss any of this is here. And so at that last meeting, literally that was the first time as a group that we were able to, to find out what we were thinking um, about this process as well. Um, I, I agree that the ACORN very much misrepresented what happened at that meeting, and um, I actually um, asked them to, um, to make a change in that article. Um, as far as getting the word out, um, I think we've done a, a I see very um, strong similarities between what we have done for, for these hearings as what we did for the community workshop for the courthouse. And we had almost 100 people show up for that. So I don't know what, what drives people out. Um, I, you know, we can always do better, um, but um, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what else to do. I know that, you know, at least on, on my social media, I am throwing it out there. Everybody I talk to, I'm talking about this. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure where to go with that. Um, I also want to talk about um, something I've heard, I've been reading, um, and I heard some comments about tonight about um, the council's self-interest. Um, I think we're already at a disadvantage um, because we are the people, you know, voting on this, and um, obviously there's that appearance of are we doing this for ourselves. Um, I hope you trust, I can't speak for everybody else, but I, um, I do believe in my colleagues, and we really are, um, I am really trying hard to make sure that this is about what's best for the community long after I'm gone. Um, when I am here and I'm sharing my my thoughts and my opinions and my views, don't, those aren't my personal opinions. <laughs> those are my opinions that I've formed based on data, based on research, based on staff reports, based on what I hear from the attorney, based on what I hear from you, whether it be a phone call or a meeting or a Facebook message or a text message or, or whatever that communication is. All of that stuff that, that I'm gathering helps formulate an opinion that I am sharing here as a representative of you not my personal beliefs. Um, my personal belief matters as much as all of you. So that's not much <laughs> for me. I'm representing you. So I want you to know that. Um, I was one of the, the few people that, that actually wanted districting here. Um, and I can't, I can't move now. <laughs> Um, I may be districted out. I may have to run against a fellow colleague. So if I was really concerned about my self-interest, then I probably wouldn't have favored districts. So I hope you can trust in, in this process that we really are trying to listen to you and represent you. Um, so let's, let's talk about the feedback now. Um, I think... I put that poll out there knowing that it was very unscientific, um, but I, I wanted to at least get some feedback um, in that sense. Um, I think, where did I put the numbers? So I had 176 people um, respond and 27% were in favor of um, a five person council, 73% council, um, were, I'm just gonna say four plus one. Um, However, 176 out of 48,000 some odd voting people is less than half a percent. So it's a pretty small sample size. I don't really find that super indicative of the, the pattern here. Um, 
and I can honestly say that in my in my emails, my all the communication, um, I it's probably skewed a little bit more towards um, the the four districts plus a mayor. Um, the one underlying theme that I am hearing and, and getting is that people are feeling a loss of control through all of this process. And I get that. You're going from voting for three people one year and then two years later you vote for two people and then three and then two. And now you're potentially going to switch to a, um, a system where you're voting once every four years. So that can feel like a real loss of control. Um, I think that's arguable. Um, I believe that the districting is going to help that engagement. I think that you're going to have a smaller group to engage with somebody that's representing a smaller area. And I think that it's more than just votes that, that um, is that representative relationship in the community. I think it's that everyday engagement. So um, the trade-off may be that you're only casting a vote every four years, but you may be engaging with your representative representative council member more. Um, the pros and cons have been, have been listed here. Um, I'm only going to mention the ones that I haven't heard. Um, I, I do think it's important that we, we understand that the mayor does not have any more power in terms of setting our agenda or the vision for the city. We do that as a group and that wouldn't change. Um, I, the goal of districts was to get more representation. Um, allow For me, I saw it as a way that would allow more people to run for office, a more manageable campaign, a closer relationship with constituents. I am concerned that if a mayor is an at-large elected um, position, that only not everybody would be able to, to run for that position. Um, we are part-time. Um, I have a full-time job. If I, had, if I had to do what the mayor does and do it all on my own, um, there's no way I could do that with a full-time job. And I think that automatically um, carves out a large group of people that wouldn't be able to run for mayor. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have to work hard, right? I mean, I'm, I'm doing a full-time job and this, and I, trust me. <laughs> um, but I think everybody ought to be able to fill that position. And I think that if only people who um, are um, wealthy enough to not have to have a full-time job or retired, then that really limits who can be mayor. Um, so just another thought. Um, stand by. Um, that's, um, yeah, I'm not going to just rehash things that have already been said. Um, I, I'm, I'm feeling very torn. I think there are good reasons for, for both. Um, I personally lean towards one over the other, but um, again, it's not my personal belief. Um, I would propose that we ask for two maps. I don't think we need to make the decision yet. I think asking the public to turn in maps that show us um, you know, their idea of, of both ways may provide some insight. You know, maybe we find that five districts just doesn't work well, no matter how you cut it. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, or maybe it'll be the opposite. Um, or maybe they'll just be you know, a map that stands out for some other reasons that helps us make that decision. Um, so, so one proposal would be for, for me to, to go with, with those two choices. Um, the other idea that I'm just going to throw out there would be to settle on five districts now um, and then put it to the public um, to vote on in 2020 um, and really give the people um, their choice. So um, that's where I'm at right now. Those are, those, are my, those are my two suggestions rather than making a decision tonight on one. Mrs. Craven? Yeah, I, I have several things and I want to say again, I was not in favor of districting and I think it will divide our city uh, more than 
It's already been divided according to what some people said at the previous public hearing and at uh, the January meeting, uh, or it will divide the city in a way it's never been divided according to a way a lot of other people think. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the, the, the mayorship, shall we call it. Um, even though the mayor, whether the mayor is elected or, as a mayor or as a council member, that person has no more power than any of the other count, than any of the council members. Um, however, there is a perception, I believe. If you go to Oxnard, where they've had an elected mayor for quite a while, um, there's a perception that that mayor has a lot more power than uh, any of the council members, even though he has only one vote. And I think that makes a big difference. So I believe that as a general law city, with a city manager, council, form of government, uh, well, it served the city well, and I think it would continue to serve the city well. Uh, I have always said that I thought that Camarillo had uh, a really good deal here with the way we do the mayor, and I believe it, will con it would continue that way. Each of us, on the first Wednesday of December, grabs a baton and we run a marathon for a whole year. We go out to all of the events. We, get, we do a whole lot more than elected mayors do because they can't keep up that, that energy continuously year after year after year. At, by the next December, first Wednesday of December, we pass the baton along to somebody else. And I, I think that that has uh, served us well. So the point of this, but, but more than that, the point of this exercise, whether I agreed with districts or not, the point of the exercise according to the state law and the federal law is to make sure that minorities have a chance to be represented. I believe that if we divided into four districts, a minority would have much less chance of being represented up here than if we went with five districts because the population of the five districts will be smaller. Each of the five districts will be smaller. And so I think that four districts would be more discriminatory than, than any other way of doing it. I think it minimizes the uh, impact of the minorities within the districts. So I, I favor a five district uh, and five elected council member system. All right. Anyone else? Mr. Moshe? <clears throat> I want to echo a lot of Susan's sentiment because, and I'm not going to repeat most of what you said because you said it excellent. <laughs> you said it very well. You said it probably better than I could. Um, and for the sake of everyone's time, um, I, I echo a lot of Susan's sentiment. Um, <clears throat> there's probably one or two slight distinctions between um, most of what she said and what I'm going to say, and that's that I didn't favor districting um, from the start, and I don't di favor districting now. What I'd prefer, rather than five districts or four districts in the mayor at large, would be one district and five members. <laughs> um, I, I'd much prefer that, but that is, we've, we've walked through the door, and uh, there is no going back at this point. Um, <clears throat> a few months ago when we made this decision to go to tra transition to districting, I had two primary concerns um, about districting, apart from the fact that I honestly don't think it necessarily achieves its, its desired result. Um, but one was the dilution of, of an individual's vote, or the dilution of the threshold one must meet in order to um, uh, attain a seat up here. Um, and that right now it takes approximately 10,000 votes from an at-large election and districting could potentially restrict that down to, or whittle that down to as little as 3,000 votes um, for one to attain a city council seat, making the exact same de decisions as we make today, having the, the same impact uh, on our community as the decisions we make up here today. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't like the, the dilution uh, of that threshold. Um, and I also had concerns about it creating factions in, uh, amongst the council members. <clears throat> so I'm at odds when it comes to five districts and a rotating mayor and four districts and a mayor at large. 
And that's largely because one, each, each of those puts at rest one concern and, and, and the other one you know, puts at rest the other concern and raises concerns respectfully. Um, <clears throat> five districts in a rotating mayor further dilutes that threshold that I'm most concerned about. Uh, four districts in an at-large mayor makes the districts larger. Um, that is, it helps raise that threshold. It gives individuals an opportunity. If, if we didn't four districts in an at-large mayor, I'd, I'd favor that mayor be serving a two-year term. Um, and that way, everyone can have, at least have two votes as a, every, yeah, two votes, um, or two votes are at least one vote every election cycle as opposed to simply one vote every four years. They would be, um, they would be more empowered. Um, they wouldn't feel like they're losing control. Um, and, their, and their voice has, you know, a little bit more staying power than, than the alternative. Um, <clears throat> with that, <clears throat> and this is something that goes to, to what Charlotte said, there is this perception as to what the mayor is and what people think the mayor is. <clears throat> um, as no, no ill will towards Kevin, you just happen to be the mayor this year and whatnot. So that is, is, you know, what I say has nothing to, um, it's nothing to do, uh, uh, doesn't reflect on you. Um, <clears throat> but the mayor, it, it's an honorary position. Um, they preside over meetings, they do sign contracts, and they might speak to the press, they go to ribbon cuttings, they speak at public events on behalf of the city council. Their vote is, just carries as much weight as ours. Um, we are a team, we are a unit. Um, we must find consensus amongst the five of us. And this goes back to a lot of what Susan said, and I agree wholeheartedly. Um, <clears throat> and I, I do have concerns that the four district and the mayor kind of undermines that, and then it gives rise, as, as one speaker, as Bill Little had mentioned, um, that it, it could give rise to, to friction um, or faction amongst the council and more politicking. Um, and that is uh, definitely a concern uh, of mine. Um, <clears throat> the system has worked since 1964, the five members in a rotating mayorship. That's not to say that four districts and at-large mayor might somehow be better. Um, I don't want to necessarily rule out just because it, this has always been the way it's been doesn't mean that it's the way it has to be into the future. Um, but <clears throat> I, I, do, I do agree with the sentiment that the system we've had thus far has served Camarillo relatively well. Um, we are a well-run city. Uh, we, sure, we have our issues. Um, we definitely have, have our issues. Um, and as every community does, I think we have a far fewer issues than most of the communities in this county and most of the communities in the state. Um, we are very sound financially. We're, um, I think we run things relatively well. Not to say it can't be better. Um, <clears throat> I would, um, I don't want to dribble on, but I do favor uh, Susan's recommendation of, of because I, I am hearing things, I'm hearing a lot from a lot of different people um, and they're falling on both sides of this issue. I don't think there's enough education uh, amongst a lot of the public um, as to what the benefits and, and the pitfalls are of one over another. Uh, I think looking at two different sets of maps might in, help enlighten us on the council. I think it'll help enlighten you um, as you participate in that process and really kind of go through the motions and looking at what four districts at large would look like and what five districts would look like. Um, yeah, I am, partic I am leaning a little bit heavy to, to one side um, more than the other, but uh, I, I, I like to keep an open mind through this process. So I did, I, I'm sure I can be enlightened um, and I should keep my mind open to new information um, and the public's will. Um, and right now it's overwhelmingly cited to four districts and an at-large mayor. Um, again, Susan and I ran polls and, and 170, or in my case, 140 votes is not a, a properly representative sample size in which to make this a decision that's going to affect upwards near of uh, 70,000 residents. Um, but I'd be open to, to kind of doing a two-track um, as, we, as we walk down this, this road. Mr. Emily, would you like to? I don't think anybody's going to be surprised if I say that I have some uh, some kind of extensive comments. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and plunge in. 
Um, this is a very hard question, and it requires, I'm glad we're having this discussion and, and this full discussion and, and, uh, uh, and, and debate, as it were. Um, bottom line is that there are thoughtful and legitimate arguments on both sides. There just are. Um, I've received input from residents on both sides of the issue, and we've heard input from residents on both sides of the issue tonight. And interestingly enough, those contrasting views are coming from both supporters of switching from at-large to districts and from those who wish that we weren't switching from at-large to districts. So you have this full universe of, of comments and positions that are, are, are coming in. Um, my views are informed by what I've heard from people, including those who, and I appreciate their speaking tonight in, 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 in this public hearing, and based on, on, on my experience as well. And, and I've had a chance to speak with council members in other cities um, who have gone through this process. So I want to start first from a common baseline. The common baseline is this. Switching from at-large to districts is obviously very significant. We can all, I think, agree to that. I've said before, putting aside the, from a voting rights standpoint, I'm skeptical about having districts from a governance standpoint. And it's the governance that I want to focus on uh, here. Uh, in my view, and I said this at the prior meeting where we s initially discussed these things, um, I think that unless it's addressed properly, having districts increases the risk of factionalization on this council. I, I, I really do. And so, for example, you have a council member who thinks only of their respective district and not at the city at large. Uh, Take a specific example, fighting over who gets uh, a bigger share of pavement dollars in their district each year. There's, a, there's an example. Uh, that's something that we as a council are going to have to work on proactively uh, uh, during this next year. And I, I think that is, that, that is work uh, that is ahead of us. So there's the baseline. Now let's weigh both sides. And, you know, being a lawyer, I got to weigh both sides. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Not really. On the pro side, um, there is some legitimate appeal in having one person responsible to city voters at large. And you distill it down to two reasons. One, that person is unencumbered by having to focus on a specific district and could focus on the city at large. At least that's the assertion. I'm going to come back to that one later. That's the assertion. Number two, from a voting standpoint, as many of you have said tonight, and I appreciate, uh, city residents could elect a mayor separately in addition to their vote for a council member from their, from their district if we went to, for example, to a four district plus a separately elected mayor. Those are good points. Um, now, you have to weigh them against the counterpoints. On the other side, there are several legitimate arguments in my view on why it's not a good idea from a governance standpoint to have a separately elected at-large mayor. And I want to talk about four of them. Number one, I'm concerned that having an elected at-large mayor with all the other council members elected by districts actually increases the potential for a dysfunctional council, for a council that's infighting. That is a primary concern of mine. That's not healthy from a governance standpoint. That's not healthy for a well-run city like the city of Camarillo. No one in this room, if I asked people to stipulate, I don't think anyone wants to see our city council become like Congress. <laughs> Perish the thought. because. Very little of substance gets done there because of infighting among members. That, in my view, is actually a worse disenfranchisement of voters. 
than not having a separately elected mayor. Why does having an elected mayor increase the opportunity for, for factionalization? Or dysfunction, let's, put, let's make it dysfunction. Well, the mayor in essence, and everyone's paid respect to Kevin tonight, we're all picking on him, but, but the mayor is in essence an honorary position. They have just one vote. And the same as other council members. I don't want to see a situation created on the council where animosity is embedded on the council because a mayor feels that his or her vote is worth more and that they're more important than the other council members because they've been elected at large. That's the concern. I think that invites power brokering. I think that invites jockeying for position rather than working as a collective body for the good of the city because we still have to base, our obligation is to do what we think is right for the entire city. And we all up here obviously have been elected at large and I know have that perspective. Well, where do I get that from? I get that from 35 years of law practice, many times appearing in front of city councils that have different models of governance, including a, either a mayor or B, not having a separately elected mayor or B, not having a separately elected mayor. Secondly, it's not just a council issue. I think there has been a, a, a comments by a couple of council members tonight and by members of the public that what happens when you have a separately elected mayor and their sense that their view should carry greater weight than other council members, what happens when they're not content with setting policy? What happens when they want to start micromanaging? And by that I mean becoming overtly engaged in the management of the city. And in effect, I've seen situations where that person becomes an ex officio city manager. That can create internal conflicts in the management of the city. So it's not just at the council level, it's at the management level. Having a separately elected mayor can create the expectation, however erroneous, that the mayor manages the city. <laughs> That's not the mayor's job. It's not the mayor's job here. Camarillo's system of government, having a professional city manager run the city under the policy direction of a five-member city council has worked since the city's incorporation. It's worked well. Most people I know, I guess there are a few exceptions, but most people I know think the city by and large is relatively well run and sure, we got, we got issues. We have things we could do a lot better on and, and we always do and I freely ad admit that. But I think having a separately elected mayor, you're asking for potential problems from that standpoint. Thirdly, the mayor is an honorary position. But with a separately elected mayor, you have this expectation created. I'm concerned about that. You have an expectation created that they're more powerful than they actually are. So the question is, why create that expectation when they have more power when in fact they don't? What's the point? Fourthly, an elected mayor position is viewed by some as just a stepping stone to higher office as opposed to focusing on what's best for the city. I want the mayor here to focus on what's best for this city and I think all my colleagues uh, do that. Those four thoughts are all, in my view, real world problems created by having a separately elected mayor. And the bottom line is that it has the potential to make the council's government of the city more difficult and more dysfunctional and no one wants that to happen. Setting the table for council dysfunction is not a win for city residents. It's a loss. That's a worse disenfranchisement of voters. That's creating the friction points that were talked about earlier. Why go do that? Why set yourself up for potential failure? Interesting, we've received arguments from a proponent uh, in, in one of the emails. A, a, a real proponent, an ardent proponent of five districts who asserts that having a separately elected mayor would undermine the whole rationale for going to a district system. 
and result in less representation and greater dilution of minority voters. And they also added and create a new level of bureaucracy where you have a council, a mayor, and then a, a, a city manager. I, I understand that argument and I think it's, I, I think it's, an, it's, an, it's, it's a thoughtful argument. One thing that really strikes me here is that in arguing for, in my view, with, with all due respect, in arguing for having four districts plus a mayor, there's an assumption that's being made or, or a, a threshold premise that's being articulated. And that's that as a council member representing a district, I cannot or won't do what's best for the city of Camarillo. Well, that's wrong. That's inconsistent with the oath of office that I took. I mean, sure, if I move forward and represent a district, um, my obligation is, is to act on what I think is best for the city as a whole and its residents as a whole. That's how I see my obligation as a council member. Well, that doesn't change just because the district is transitioning. I'm sorry, that doesn't change just because the city is transitioning to a district system. It, it doesn't change it at all. So on balance, I think the arguments against having a separately elected mayor outweigh the perceived advantages. Um, the staff report is elucidating because there are many other local cities referenced in the staff report that do not have a separately elected mayor. Some have districts, some don't. But for example, city of Ventura just went through districting and the council chose not to have a separately elected mayor. So we're not out here on a limb by ourselves at all. Um, lastly, almost. <laughs> Finally, um, almost. Um, Camarillo in the last six months, think of the changes that, have un that we've undergone here in the city from a governance standpoint. Two really extraordinary changes. Term limits for council members, which I'm intimately familiar with having drafted Measure E and, and battled with my colleagues at that time uh, over. And number two, switching from at-large to district voting. Well, there is a legitimate point of view that we've got a lot on our plate right now in just dealing with those, and we should take some time to breathe uh, before instituting another significant change. A couple of I thought the speakers tonight, I really appreciated. I, I think they were outstanding in, in their views and I wanna thank you. One comment I wanna make, a couple of comments. Um, one speaker, and I, I believe it was Dr. Dixon, said it's not whether you work well together. And, and respectfully, I disagree with that. Very respectfully, I, I disagree with that. Because I think it's very important how the council works together. I also think it's very important that citizens feel that uh, feel represented. And frankly, from from you could argue, I think that it'd be better to either have all at large or all districts rather than cut it up into some hybrid of a four plus one. Um, this next comment is with respect to the mayor and um, the the. The, having a vision as the mayor, and I think that's a very good comment. But I would also add to that, that this council every February spends several hours in a goal setting session and sets the roadmap for the next year. And that's done collectively between the five of us as it should be, because all of us are establishing the roadmap that we want the city manager to, sorry, to, point, to follow over the course of the next year and he's taking his direction from us, and I think that's the right, that's the right way to go. I, I think we should narrow this down tonight. I, I, I think we should, I, I think it's responsible to narrow it down tonight. It's a responsible thing to do. Um, and I think we should, you know, this might come about in another couple of years. I don't think, you know, who knows? We may want to come back at some point and re-examine it. In, in a couple, in 2020, 2021, right? But I don't think, I think right now, we need to, to breathe and breathe deeply, do what's in front of us, and 
stay with the district, stay with a, a five member, uh, five council member district set up. So thanks for your patience with those long remarks. Okay, so I'm not an attorney, so my, uh, my comments uh, will reflect a pants salesman. <laughs> um, yeah, but is the sale coming up or you're trying to keep it going? <laughs> all things being said. Uh, kind of jotted down a couple of thoughts here, and I thought first when they were talking about maybe an elected mayor, I thought, well, well, you know, that would be something... <laughs> That might be kind of interesting for the city. And as most of us do, you know, you sit down with a piece of paper and you write the pros and cons. And as I got more deeply into it, um, I'd like to, first of all, thank everybody that's here that took the time out of their busy schedules to come up here and talk about this, you know, this issue here. That's uh, really enlightened for me. Uh, as was said, you know, we incorporated 1964, and uh, in those days, they really, it took them a while to really get into any kind of rotation, and it was kind of interesting. It wasn't until probably four or six years six afterwards. Six years. Six years. I believe they went to a two-year mayoral well, show. they had two years at first. They had two years, and uh, a number of years before I was elected, they actually changed it back to one year. And um, as I said, there's, there, you know, there's arguments on both sides of this issue. But uh, my experience as a mayor, and I've been fortunate you know, to, to be mayor, you know, this is my fifth time, that um, it allows everyone to have an equal chance at being mayor. And my experience, too, is that it keeps a lot of the special interests out of issues, too. Uh, we have to work with all of our colleagues here, and we work very, very closely with them. Uh, also, it creates cohesiveness on the council, and as was said, uh, no one person becomes more powerful than the other. However, when you do become a mayor, uh, there is some influences that actually come your way. Uh, whether you elect a mayor or you're appointed the mayor, people have a certain expectations of what the mayor can, and sometimes, more importantly, what the mayor can't do here. Uh, I think of a, of a main importance of this is that the rotation helps you round out and mature as a council member. You become more refined and you gain valuable experience uh, being mayor. And I can remember my first term, I was uh, a young and aspiring council member, and I got into the seat of this mayoralship here, and boy, did it, cha it change my experience as being a council member. You grow exponentially uh, when you do become mayor. And let me be very clear, this seat is referred oftentimes as a hot seat, and boy, there's times when this seat gets real hot. So, you know, you, you start looking at what uh, my colleagues have said and the changes that we've had in the past uh, six months here. Uh, we do have, in my opinion, a tried and proven system here. The system in place, it has worked. Uh, I always try to improve the current system before I replace it totally. And my feeling is, is that this system has worked. I think it will uh, be beneficial to what we're, at, we're tasked to do here, and that's with creating, um, you know, going from an at-large into a district. I think it would be beneficial to us to have five council members here and rotate uh, within it uh, in the years, uh, a year at time, as was said here. Um, we, we're asked to do a lot with this, and I understand everybody's opinions, and there's really not any right or wrong. All I can say from my experience that this system that we've got with five council members rotating on a yearly basis has been, uh, in my opinion, very effective uh, to the city council here. So uh, having said all that, I think it has served us well, and I'd recommend that we stick with the five uh, council members on rotating and have the council continue to select the mayor. 
All right. So with that, is there any, Mr. Tremley? Yeah. I would it be appropriate to, uh, to make the motion? I'll go ahead and do that. All right. I'll sure. make I'll make a motion that the council adopt the uh, resolution 2019 slash blank uh, attached to the staff report um, with sections one, two, three, five, six, seven, and eight unchanged and with section four to reflect option number one, five with the mayor selected annually by the city council. And that resolution also adopts the uh, criteria for the establishment of council district boundaries and desired number of districts. And finally, direct uh, NDC, the city's demographer, uh, to prepare up to four district election maps uh, for consideration at the public hearing scheduled for April 24, 2019. Second. Okay, there's a motion a second. You Mr. the discussion. Please. One comment. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Sean. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want, I'm going to vote against the measure only due to, exclusively due to the exclusion of uh, option four not being in the motion. Okay, any other comments from anybody? Um, I, I had one question. Um, did you say in your motion that the resolution directed the um, demographer to prepare the four maps, or did I mishear that? Yes. Yes, he did. I misheard. Okay. So, 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 uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pira. Can you restate? Yeah, I, I'm probably not doing a great job here, but um, understood the, the motion on the resolution. Were you also moving the, um, uh, which is the third action item, to direct the I did. demographer? Yes, okay. That was included All right. I'm that. sorry that I. Okay. Please vote. That passes 3-2 uh, with Ms. Santangelo and uh, Mr. Mulshay voting.